The crew at the VH Speed and Resto Shop perform all kinds of upgrades on classics and muscle cars, from performance improvements to complete restorations. Today, the team is working on this sweet 1973 Pontiac Trans Am, adding a Holley EFI system and a gear vendor's overdrive unit to the original Pontiac drivetrain. If you'd like more info on these upgrades or need help with a project of your own, you can reach the shop at v8speedshop.com slash contact. This 1973 Pontiac Trans Am is a super cool car. It's finished in Buccaneer Red with white interior. It's got a 455 HO engine that was rebuilt by Butler Performance. Uh, it's a little bit bigger displacement with a cam and a torque converter. It's a Turbo 400 transmission, uh, but the customer wants to be able to cruise this car a little bit easier down the highway and uh, turn a few, you know, fewer RPM as he's on road trips. So right now, with the Turbo 400, this car is turning about 2,200 RPM at 55 miles per hour. So what we're going to end up doing is installing a gear vendor's automatic overdrive unit onto the original transmission to bring that cruising RPM down, but to not lose any of his acceleration snap because of the stock gear ratio that's in the car now. And we're also going to be adding a Holley Sniper EFI system so that this 455 starts easy and is you know, very responsive to the throttle pedal and might even get better fuel economy with the overdrive and the fuel injection. So it's really going to make this car perform a lot better, but it's not going to change the way it looks in any way. It'll still have that awesome stock appearing 73 455 Buccaneer Red Shaker Hood Trans Am uh, appearance. It's a cool car. This is a pretty nice Trans Am. The owner's had it for quite a while. He, uh, he and his wife bought it in 1985. His wife drove it to college at the time. They had it restored not that long ago. Uh, driven a little bit. We fixed a couple little things here and there on it. But one of the things I didn't like about it is it's not that much fun to go on long distance with because it's a 455 Butler motor, turbo 400, and a pretty low rear gear, so it turns you know, 3,000 RPM plus to do the highway speed. Well, that gets loud and annoying, drinks a lot of fuel, we decided to be a gear vendor's overdrive. One, the car works great as it is. Uh, Turbo 400 is working well. Turbo 400 uh, has the Pontiac bolt pattern, bolts up to the Pontiac engine. So you're, you're limited on your options to put a different transmission behind. We could do a 204R, but that's remove a working transmission to replace it with a different transmission. So why not use a gear vendor's? Because it basically just bolts on the back with minimal modifications to the car. While we are at the uh, gear vendor's project, the customer wanted to improve his uh, drivability, especially starting. The uh, car had a quadrajet carburetor on it. And since it doesn't get driven very often, carburetor dries out, mechanical fuel pump, you gotta crank it a bunch to get fuel up into it, kill the battery trying to start it when you wanna take it out. Uh, plus, you know, carburetors need attention more often than a fuel injection system, so we did a Holley Sniper EFI at the same time. One of the best things about the Sniper system is that it's available in a quadrajet uh, pattern, so it bolts onto the quadrajet manifold and the original shaker fits without a bunch of modifications. The fact that this is pretty close to a bolt-on and go for the situation is phenomenal. So gear vendor's overdrive is a separate transmission, uh, basically a one-speed overdrive that bolts onto the back of just about any transmission you can think of uh, through an adapter housing. And what it does is the output shaft of the main transmission drives a pump in it, just like the engine would drive a pump in a regular automatic. That builds oil pressure, and then the electronic controls apply the oil pressure to the clutch pack and shift the gears for you. Uh, once that happens, the output shaft speed is increased versus the input shaft speed, and you get an extra gear. Uh, there's a lot of ways to use it. Uh, they call it an overdrive and underdrive. You can actually have it with a gear set to underdrive for uh, something that might be geared too high or maybe a truck application. Uh, additionally, because you can control its uh, shift points manually or automatically, uh, you can split gears. So as long as you're above a high enough road speed for the oil pump to make pressure, 
you could overdrive in every gear all the way up to the top. So if you wanted to or found a need, you could drive this as a six-speed automatic now. Sometimes you may want to change what gear you hit in what order, uh, like in a drag race situation. So maybe you go first, first overdrive, and then second, and then third, uh, to get a better gear ratio, keep your engine in the power band. Really is a versatile piece of equipment, depending on what your goals are and how you want to use it. Uh, since I mentioned drag racing, uh, these things are built incredibly strong. The base model starts at like 1,700 horsepower capable, uh, and that's why a lot of guys in drag would use them, is they can run some really low drag gear and something with a lot of stall or like a power glide or even turbo 400s, turbo 350s, whatever, but then gain themselves another gear that makes the car streetable enough to be able to drive the route between each drag stop. So as far as installing gear vendors, uh, one of the things they recommend you do is measure your driveline angle because if you overlook driveline angle, you can create a sine wave vibration from U-joints being out of phase. Uh, so check the driveline angles, write those down for reference later. And then you uh, pull the drive shaft, depending on your transmission situation, uh, you pull the cross member and maybe the mount off the tail shaft housing, which is the case on Turbo 400, and take the tail shaft housing out. Uh, once you're there, that's pretty much all you have to do to the transmission itself uh, that belongs to the car. Uh, next thing is you cut some templates out of the book and you utilize those to get an idea of if you've got to modify your floor at all. Uh, in this case, there's a brace that goes across the floor uh, that isn't really critical once the car's assembled. It's more, uh, was easier for GM to assemble the cars with. So we had to take a little bit out of that to make some room for the uh, unit. During the modification process, in order to make sure the car uh, has a nice long life, we took care to seam seal any things that we cut open and put some paint on them, protect them from corrosion. Uh, once you've got enough room for the uh, overdrive, uh, they provide an adapter housing, which bolts on where your tail shaft housing used to be, and then a coupler, uh, which has got the splines from your donor transmission on one end, and then the matching splines for the gear vendors on the other side. And uh, you set the end play uh, on that with some shims, and then basically you bolt it all together. Once you've set the end play on your coupler and the uh, adapter, uh, you install the gaskets and they uh, recommend installing them dry and torquing everything to spec. And because everything's nicely machined and new, uh, these things are pretty leak free. Uh, once the unit itself is bolted in the car, uh, you either have to have a new drive shaft made or modify your old one. Uh, so then contact your drive shaft supplier, follow their procedure to measure that, get your new drive shaft and install it. Uh, and the other part of this is the electronic piece. So there's a control module uh, that reads the road speed and then governs the automatic portion of the shift or prohibits you from shifting it when you're not supposed to based on road speed. Because again, the oil pump has to be spinning enough to make enough pressure to properly apply the clutches and not damage the, the unit. Uh, it's a matter of finding a place to put the control box and deciding where and what model of control switches you want to use. Uh, in this case, we have a dimmer switch for the manual shift, which we mount on the floor uh, in the place of the original headlight switch. And then we move the headlight switch a little farther up because you're probably going to be using the manual shift more than the headlight switch. Uh, and then in the console, we put a toggle switch to toggle between manual and automatic, as well as the indicator lights, so that you know what's going on. Once you got the electronic stuff uh, installed and wired up, you got to fill it with fluid. Uh, it just uses regular automatic transmission fluid. Uh, they don't recommend synthetics in it. and then you're supposed to drive it for a couple miles without using overdrive to prime the pump and circulate the oil and all that uh, before you use overdrive. Uh, once you've been through that two miles, you're free to do whatever you want. You can drive it like you stole it, go drag racing, you can cruise to you know, local burger joint, whatever you're uh, ready to do. We're driving the 73 Firebird, just finished installing a gear vendor's overdrive in it. Uh, and there's some reasons that that's a great idea for this car. One is it's a 455 Butler built engine. It's got a turbo 400 and it all works really well. It's just geared a little too high for long cruises. So the gear vendors bolting onto the back of the existing equipment is a relatively easy solution. Uh, the other thing that's great about the gear vendor system is you can drive it several different ways. So we have a switch down the console where we can turn it to manual or automatic. So that's an manual mode now with this switch off and see there's no lights on so if I click it to overdrive see there's two lights on both the red and green engaged so the red meant that it was on but it wasn't in gear yet when the green turns on with no red that means it's an overdrive 
when you have it in automatic, you'll see both red and lights come on again. But if you're going too slow for overdrive, the red light will come on when it's in automatic. Additionally, if you're going too slow and you try to shift into overdrive when it's in manual, the red light will come on to let you know that you're out of parameter. Uh, the overdrives only can be used any time above about uh, 30 miles an hour in manual mode. Uh, with the toggle switch in the automatic position, you can still use the manual switch in that function to turn it on and off. So if you want to utilize it as a passing gear, so kick it down from overdrive to third and pass somebody, you can. Uh, if you utilize your foot to pass somebody just by flooring the throttle, it'll kick down the main transmission to second, and then you'd be in second overdrive. So you still have a passing gear, but if you need more, you can click down and be straight second gear. In manual mode, you can utilize it however you want, as long as you're above proper road speed. So splitting gears, combining overdrive wherever you want uh, to get whatever engine speed or performance you're looking for. I would say it's worth it because, again, this car worked perfectly before, other than the user experience wasn't what the owner wanted. Uh, so it dropped your engine RPM, it cruises at like 2200 RPM due to the speed limit now, or, you know, 60, 65. Uh, it shifts plenty firm. You can, you tell it's in overdrive, you're not afraid you're going to break the car. The, the biggest thing I'd say is, depending on the car you're working with, is your space. Uh, the unit is pretty small but some cars have obstacles and small tunnels. Uh, so knowing that you have enough space or you're willing to cut your car to make the space is probably the biggest thing. Uh, beyond that, it's a really easy install. Electronics are simple, there's not that many connections. I guess the best way to put it is it can be as difficult as you want to make it as far as making your floor fit and look nice where you want to hide the electronics, that sort of thing. With the overdrive, the car is a lot more user friendly. The owner is able to cruise at a highway speed at a much lower RPM. Uh, that coupled with the sniper, so it starts better, the throttle response is crisper. Ultimately, it'll probably get some better fuel economy between a more uh, correct air fuel ratio and lower engine RPM. The car's gonna last longer because fuel injection overdrive help the engine uh, not work as hard or be as gummed up by too much fuel with the choke and all those sorts of things. Uh, overall, it's just gonna make the car last that much longer. So we do these things all the time. So you can contact us at v8speedshop.com.